Welcome. It's really exciting to see all of you this morning. We've been working on this. It's been an idea of ours for a long time. Um, so we're excited about sharing with you what we've learned over the last year or so. Um, we're here this morning to talk about ways to reduce, reuse, and recycle with a focus on how to replace single-use plastics. You don't need to take notes. We will send you the slides after the presentation, and we will answer questions at the end. Please put them in the chat as they come up. We have a lot to cover in a short time, so we're going to start. And I'm not going to read everything from the slides. Um, because you can read faster than I can talk. And as I said, we will be sending them out later. At Shir Hadash, we begin our programs with a little bit of Torah learning. In the Torah, the calendar includes a sabbatical year for the earth every seven years and every 50 years is a Jubilee or a Shemitah year. During that year, debts are to be forgiven, agricultural lands to life fallow private land holdings to become open to the commons, and staples such as food storage and perennial harvest are to be freely distribute, redistributed and accessible to all. There's no evidence this was ever done, but as we consider our topic today, which is about restoring the earth, we have to think about how we can lighten our own footprint. And one of the things I encourage you to think about um, as we go through this program is ways um, that you can reduce your footprint to help the earth by changing one thing in your life. Um, whether it's to not buy new sweaters this winter or whether to um, always use a, a water bottle and not buy, buy single-use plastic but to, to think about um, what you can use that honors that Shemitah idea. In 2019, Californians threw away 6.7 pounds of trash every day, more than 2,200 pounds every year, which is more than the weight of a subcompact car. These individual results are more than double California's goal of 2.7 pounds per person per day. 25% of our trash is generated between Thanksgiving and New Year's. So something to think about as we head into this holiday season, it's kind of amazing to imagine what that means. The problem we face is that so much of our trash doesn't decompose. And I'm gonna share a few slides now. Is it my first slide? Yes. So how long does it take trash to decompose? Oh. Um, but now I need to, I need to go back one. Okay, so how long does it take trash to decompose in a landfill? The time varies depending on the conditions of the landfill. And I'm just gonna highlight a few of these things. Plastic bottles, 70 to 450 years. A plastic bag, 500 to 1,000 years. And one thing to consider with like plastic bags is although they may come apart sooner, that you still have the chemicals that's in them that are filtering into the ground. A pair of leather shoes, 25 to 40 years. Thread, my own personal bugaboo, three to four months. Cotton, one to five months. Nylon clothes, 30 to 40 years. Sanitary napkins and children's diapers, 500 to 800 years. Glass bottles, basically never break down. Um, fishing line, 600 years, aluminum cans, 200 years. And these are just a few things. Surprisingly, even our vegetable waste 
when it's buried without any air getting to it will last many years. And we can look at some of the things that in the ocean that are commonly found. And I'm just gonna point out a few of these. Plywood, one to three years. Cigarette butts, one to five years. Plastic grocery bags, 10 to 20 years. Styrofoam cups, 50 years. Wool socks, one to five years. A cotton shirt, two to five months. Disposable diapers, 450 years. And these are things that are commonly found in um, when they do the debris hunts. Textile waste. So textile waste is a huge amount of our waste each year. This means everything from jeans to your favorite du duvet, um, and it makes a huge amount of waste. North Americans send more than 11 million tons of clothing to landfills every year. More than 95% of that is either reusable or recyclable. The global textile industry is very intense. Each, the average person throws away 81 and a half pounds of textiles every year. I thought this was interesting. The number, uh, how much water does it take to manufacture one t-shirt? Believe it or not, it's about 27 bathtubs full. That's more than 713 gallons. So before you shop, in order to keep us from having all this waste, we wanna think, do I need it? Do I need it new? Can I buy it used? Can I buy it locally? What is it made of? Was it ethically produced? What happens when I no longer want it? Can it be reused, repaired, recycled, composted? So for textile waste, there are several companies that have specific programs and things we can do. Um, you can read more about textile waste at roadrunnerwm.com. Uh, Patagonia has a program that they will recycle your used Patagonia gear and give you a gift certificate or credit toward future purchases of Patagonia gear. The North Face will recycle your gently used apparel and footwear. Again, you'll get some kind of credit. Um, H&M, there are stores you can drop off textiles, old or new, from any brand. And they'll also give you a credit. According to them, the brand collected 20,649 um, I just lost it. Um, I think it's it, um, tons. Tons, thank you, of textiles for reuse and recycling in 2018. And that amount is growing. And I believe there's an H&M in Los Gatos. EcoWealth is a company that takes waste from the bottom of the ocean and has, is using that to develop fabrics, which they turn into top quality garments sold by other companies. Madewell, the nearest one is in Redwood City, I think, will take your worn jeans and give you credits for new jeans. And again, they'll take any brand. So those are some recycling programs for textile waste that are available. Um, buying used extends a garment life, according to ThreadUp, by about two years. Um, I think most of us know a lot of these resources, such as ThreadUp, Poshmark, um, Goodwill, Salvation Army, Nearly New, Savers, um, and of course, there's all the little, small, used clothes stores. Elisa? I just wanted to point out to everybody, I'm wearing this, this is 100% cotton, sweatshirt from thread up and uh, I'm wearing some uh, cotton corduroy 
uh, pants that are, it's 99% cotton. I know, Michal, you've been having trouble finding like a jean jacket that is all natural fiber, but um, I got both of these on ThreadUp. The, the jeans are Eddie Bauer and they're 99% cotton and they cost $11. And they, you know, you, when you use these sites, you can choose new with tags or like new. And I've had such good luck doing that. Um, you save money, you, you, you rescue things from the landfill or from being shipped over to Africa. And um, also you get to pick the colors or the size. I, I wear petite clothing and it's often in stores, hard to find them. Um, so, I can just search and say, I want to see what petite clothing you have. And then um, I can buy something that I know is going to fit me. So um, I just wanted to point that out. The challenge with um, ThreadUp and Poshmark, which they're pretty straightforward about, is, they, is that they need to work on their shipping to reduce their carbon footprint um, shipping from one place to another. So it's better than buying new um, if we can recycle it. And if we can not buy it to start with, we're doing even better. The other thing is renting your clothing. Um, rent the one, runway has this vision of being a virtual closet. So if you need um, clothes for work rather than buying something and um, you, know, you like it for a year and then you want something new. Maybe you want something for three months or you want something for a special affair. Um, you can rent it and return it and then those new clothes get used over and over. Um, again, the challenge with rent your with renting your clothing is the, the impact of shipping. But once again, buying something that's already produced um, is more environmental than buying something new. Now, there are all, one of the things I learned in putting this together is if you have any questions about whether something can be recycled, Google, how can I recycle whatever? Um, I wear um, daily wear con uh, contact lenses. So I go through a lot of contact lenses and blister pack string here and it made me crazy that I was always throwing this way. And I asked at my eye doctor and they said, oh, but it's all recyclable. Well, that's true, but in recycling, they won't take things this small. So it turns out that TerraCycle, when I Googled it, that a company called TerraCycle has um, a partnership with Barnes Hind in the US with AccuView in Britain. And they, if you drop off your cartons, or not the box, not the cardboard boxes, because those can go into your recycling, but the plastic packs, the blister packs, even the used contact lenses, they recycle the whole thing. Um, so it's easy to look up where there's an optometrist near you who collects them. And they take all brands of contact lenses. So a couple of, let me go through these briefly. Recyclestuff.org provides information on how to recycle in Santa Clara and San Mateo County. Um, it will tell you what can and can't be recycled in the different um, waste companies that do our trash pickup and also what needs to go into hazardous and where to take it and other things you can look up and it'll tell you if there's someone to handle it. Habitat for Humanity accepts small and large donations of new or gently used furniture, appliances, housewares, building materials, and more. Um, they took our leftover granite from our countertops, uh, tile from the bathroom, um, and they'll come and pick it up. And then they either use it in their homes or they will sell it in their habitat for Humanity. Uh, resource area for teachers, RAFT, will accept some supplies that can be used in classroom kits for students. 
And if you go to their website, they give you a list of what they'll take. So terracycle.com is really interesting. You can get from them a buy a box, which is a little pricey, but you can put everything you want to recycle in it and ship it to them. And then they will recycle, recycle it. Um, it's great for people like my son who lives somewhere where they do not have curbside pickup. They also provide information on more than 100 special programs um, called brigades <clears throat> that companies do. So for instance, you can return cosmetics to Nordstrom. There's a brigade for returning contact lenses, big pens, um, crayons and markers, solo cups. Who would have thought those plastic solo cups that we all use for parties were recyclable um, through a special way? Um, there's um, you, so you can recycle contact lenses through a partnership um, with um, TerraCycle and Bashlom. Oral B um, Crest, you can send in all brands of used oral care products, toothbrushes, brush heads, toothpaste tubes, mouthwash containers, floss containers, floss string, floss picks. Um, and if you go to their website, they'll give you a mailing label um, and you can just send it to them for free. So it's worth looking because there's all kinds of things that you can recycle that are not accepted for recycling through our um, curbside recycling, which varies from one community to another. And that's everything that I have to share. Um, so we'll gonna move on to Elisa. Oh, I need to unshare. So, sorry. Um, okay. I think we're yes. good. Yes, Everything. I think we're good. All right. So, Linda talked a lot about recycling. And although recycling is good when we actually can and do do that, Recycling is not going to solve our problem of plastic waste. We need to work to reduce the production of plastic at its source. And as consumers, we have choices. We don't have to opt for a throwaway culture. We can train ourselves and get used to doing otherwise. Um, I don't know about where you live, but where I live in Santa Cruz, um, nobody thinks twice anymore about bringing a reusable bag to the grocery store. Everybody does it. We got used to it. Um, and, and it's not really that hard anymore. I keep a stash of them in my car and um, I have little Chico bags in my purse. So we can do that in other ways too. We can live our value of Tishuvoh Ha'olam, protecting the earth. Um, and I'm gonna offer you some ideas of ways you might reduce your plastic consumption at home. I, I just wanna say, I'm not endorsing, I'm gonna show you a lot of things. Now, this is the show and tell part of our presentation. Um, I'm going to show you a lot of things. I, I, I don't, I'm not endorsing one brand over another. I just want to show, give you ideas of ways that you can do things a little differently to not use so much plastic. And I'm going to encourage you to try something and then, you know, experiment to see what works for you. Um, at the, uh, when we will send you a PDF after the program that lists all links to these products um, so you can see what's available. And I'm gonna tell you about some things, ways you can buy things in stores, but um, there, we, we need to have, have our stores catch up to this demand for not so much plastic. Um, so a lot of these things, you, you need to buy online. Um, but if we ask our stores to 
carry them, eventually they will. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, I'm just gonna show you, let me see if I can pause the share for a, a minute. I'm gonna show you, let's see if this works. Um, let's see, can you see all this stuff here? This is just for the bathroom. <laughs> So we're gonna go by um, we're gonna go by room, and I'm gonna show you some different things. Um, and you you can ask in the chat um, any questions, or there's not so many of us. If you want to, you can call out. Okay. Um, okay. Let's see. Hmm. Oh, I have the, okay. Okay, so I'm gonna show you some things that you could you can use in the bathroom. Do you see this, this strip of controls? Hmm. It's right across my screen. Okay, can you see the control strip on your screen? Good, okay. All right, so there are all these things, um, bar shampoo, bamboo toothbrushes, other ways of using toothpaste that is not in a plastic tube. I'm, we're going to show you these slides, but um, first I wanna actually show you some of these plastic products. So if I can find my cursor. Uh, I'm sorry. There, are you, am I still sharing? Um, you were, you were, but now you're off. Good. Okay. Let me see. So I, I want to go. Did to I pin you? No, uh, this is good. Okay. So, um, all right, the first thing I wanna show you uh, is something that I've experimented with for a while, and that is bar shampoo. So this is um, one, one brand, I have uh, uh, one, one brand, this is Vanilla. I started out at, in the local, my local health food store, which is called Wild Roots. It used to be New Leaf, if any of you are familiar. There's still some New Leafs in Santa Cruz, but the one near me is now called Wild Roots. And I tried, a, I tried a shampoo there. I gave it out as gifts for a while. And I got reports back saying, man, People like the smell, but they didn't like the feel. It left kind of a coating on their hair. So I experimented with some other brands. Trader Joe's has a brand now. Um, uh, it's tea tree oil and peppermint, um, and it's inexpensive. So I tried that. Um, it comes in one with a, a manly look too, not just a mermaid, but uh, I, I still had that same problem of feeling like there was, it didn't rinse off well. Um, there's, so um, I found this brand, Vanilla. They also have an uh, unscented version. I know um, some people need, don't want a scent, but they have beautiful choice of scents. Um, this one is like a, a a violet, there's coconut lime, and they have different, like if you have gray hair, you can choose different things. This one is lemongrass, and they also have um, conditioner bars that go, um, here's one, and all you do is kind of in the shower, when you wet your hair, you rub it on, and it suds up beautifully. Um, and the vanilla didn't seem to leave that. Um, it didn't, I, I was really happy with how it made my hair look and feel. Um, so just for this presentation, I tried to look for one that was actually in stores um, that I liked because the vanilla I have to order online. Um, but I love the conditioner and, the, and also the, um, 
the shampoo. Um, and there's no bottle. There's just this bar. The only thing I'd say about bar shampoos and conditioners, you can't leave them in your shower. You need to take them out um, because they will, like any soap, they'll dissolve if you leave them in a puddle. So um, I, I keep mine on a loofah. And then when I go out of the shower, I just take it out with me. Um, here's another one. It's, this is cute. This one is um, called, oops, called Three Sisters. I think Three Sisters Apothecary. And it's made in Sonoma, California. And I found this at the local Whole Foods. And um, it's a cute little cauldron. <laughs> uh, and I did try this and it's very good too. And they also have different flavors or scents and also different types for oily hair, dry hair, et cetera. So um, the reason I'm telling you this whole story is that I did I tried the the bar shampoo, so I wouldn't I wouldn't be generating all those shampoo bottles. And I have three girls, and I'll tell you, we generated a lot of shampoo bottles over the years. Um, so, um, but I I want you to know that you know the first one I tried wasn't so great, and I tried another one, and it wasn't so great either. And then I kept trying until I found one that I thought worked for me and was, and, and I love. So this vanilla, vanilla brand I love, but also this Three Sisters Apothecary, um, which is a local, relatively local California business and is in store, so you don't have to order online. Those are also good options. Um, so then uh, when I moved on from hair care, to other things like, um, let's see, sunscreen. <laughs> this one is called uh, Balm Baby. It comes in a, tube, a cardboard tube. It works great for traveling or for an, an outing, but if you just want some at home, they have some in a glass jar. So that's an, another option. Um, ET is a Canadian company and I buy from them. I have bought their um, toothbrushes and toothpaste and floss. Um, so they sent me a free deodorant uh, paste, they call it. And I haven't used it because I have the curse and blessing that I don't sweat. So I don't actually use deodorant. <laughs> It's both a blessing and a curse, but um, I'm gonna give this to one of my daughters to try. Um, and it, they just sent this extra product along with my order. So there are also deodorants out there that come in cardboard tubes um, and other ways to look for them. Um, I talked about the toothpaste. So I have these bite toothpaste tablets. Um, you can get tooth powders uh, and there are, there are different toothpaste products. These are kind of nice. They have a minty taste and you, you put them in your mouth and chew them and then brush your teeth. And then when you want um, to get a refill, the refill comes in this kind of a paper pouch. Um, and you just refill the jar. Same thing with the floss. So I have two kinds of floss here in um, glass jars. And you, you buy the floss, it comes in the gla glass jar. And then when you're done, you buy a refill and just stick it in. I know that Linda has a brand that comes in a bamboo in a bamboo package, a uh, bamboo case, and you just refill that too. Um, and then the toothbrushes. I tried to get my dentist to give out bamboo toothbrushes instead of plastic ones, but no luck so far. Um, you can get different, there's so many different types. Uh, um, 
places uh, that different companies that sell bamboo toothbrushes now. Here's one with a with charcoal bris bristles. This one from Bite is kind of neat because it comes with a handle. I don't know if you can see that a handle, and you just put the head. You just uh, you just put the head on, and then you buy replacement heads. Um, this is from ET, this Canadian company. They also make a bamboo electric toothbrush. So it does have the electric motor inside the bamboo case, and then you just um, buy replacement bamboo toothbrush heads. Because if you think about how many plastic toothbrushes end up in the landfill. Um, so those are all things to try. Um, I thought I, there was something else I wanted to say about toothbrushes, but it kind of went out, went out of my brain. Okay. Alyssa, um, Alyssa it's Shell. Uh, what do you do with the head of the toothbrush when you're done with it? You put it into to recycle? Yeah, so the, this particular, these particular toothbrushes, um, they're working on it. So the bamboo part itself can go in your green waste. Um, it's just wood, so it can go in your green waste. What you have to do, which is sort of a pain, is the, the bristles are nylon, so you have to pull them out and throw them in the trash. So good question, Shell. It's not ideal yet. Um, I think they're working on a new, a new way to deal with that. Um, any of these companies that I've gone to, they have an array of similar products. So we'll send you the links to ET, to Bite Toothpaste, to um, Vanilla, to, uh, I forget some of the other companies. Oh, Package Free, Net Zero. Um, let me see, what else did I wanna tell you? Oh, or in your regular drugstore, um, you can like Burt's Bees is pretty good about having things in metal tins like this one. I couldn't find it. My daughter had trouble sleeping when she was little and we bought the Badger brand uh, sleep salve, which is sort of like lavender. And anyway, Badger also has a, a line of things in tin containers or metal containers that can be recycled easily when you're done. So it's just something to keep in mind. And um, one other thing on the, let's see, I wanted to talk to you about um, on the bathroom front is, um, let's see, uh, I, I don't need these anymore, <laughs> but I've used them for, oh, these have been around for a really long time, Glad Rags, and there are all different kinds of other products to use instead of the plastic lined sanitary napkins. Um, so that's another thing. If you're still in that age group and that gender, that's another thing to use. I put in our resource list also, a link to a diaper company called Earth Baby. Um, I used to use Tiny Tots when my kids were, were little, the di cloth diaper service, um, but they are no longer around. I think maybe because of COVID, a lot of that couldn't go on. However, this, this company, Earth Baby, um, will they they will deliver and pick up your disposable compostable diapers. They have compostable diapers. However, you have to be careful about compostable things like that because it's not safe and it's actually not possible to compost those in your backyard compost. Um, so they have a special industrialized process to compost those diapers, but it they, they claim they, through their industrial process, they compost the diapers in 14 days and they sanitize them. 
I don't know, but I do know some of my children's friends are using this Earth Baby website um, instead of just throwing the diapers in the landfill, which is great. I have a quick question. Go ahead. So I'm on the other end of the spectrum. I don't use Depends myself yet, but many of the people in our community do. So what happens to Depends diapers or Depends underwear? You know what? That is, a, I wonder, I should contact Earth Baby and see if they would, if they take those things too. Otherwise, I mean, they go in the landfill, right? So, um, but I don't see that there would be any difference in their process. So, um, they I have I'll, to be compostable. They, yeah, they'd have to be a brand that's compostable. Uh huh. So, um, actually, this company Earth Baby they provide compostable diapers, but they will take any brand that is compostable. They list brands that they will take. So I wonder if this is a new market for them, Shell. <laughs> so I'm looking and I see that um, <laughs> at least some, there are at least reusable um, underwear designed to be worn over diapers. Um, there's an, a wa washable adult diaper um, that's made by a company called Selmus. Okay, so we can add that to so some we'll of our- So look into that. Yeah. All right. Um, on that same topic, um, I, want to talk, oops, I want to talk a little bit about toilet paper. Now, toilet paper, okay, you say, well, what's plastic about toilet paper? But um, there's a couple of things. Often you buy them in a, in, in a, film, in a big plastic bag. Um, so I, when there was a big, um, a big, when it was difficult to purchase toilet paper at the beginning of the pandemic, I signed up a subscription for this. Um, I know some of you know this called it's cute. Who gives a crap? This black and white, they come in these black and white papers. They come in a cardboard box. Um, these, the black and white designs our bamboo toilet paper. The colorful designs are recycled paper. These are the softer ones, just so you know. Now you do have to order a lot. And if you're in a situation where you don't have a lot of people in your household, or you don't have a lot of space, um, it's hard to buy so much. Um, my suggestion is to split an order with a friend or with family. Or go to your local grocery store and say, do you carry recycled paper, toilet paper, and ask for it. Um, Costco used to carry a brand that was made from recycled paper. Um, and then it, they stopped. So if, if their customers ask for it, they will do that again. Or I wanted to show you these. Everything's falling. Um, my daughters for Hanukkah last year bought us a little contraption that goes on the toilet. That's like a, a bidet a, a, um, appliance, and they and they it came. They brought us this. Uh, tushy bamboo towels. In certain parts of the world, they don't use toilet paper. They have a bidet and they use cloth and they wash it. So um, that's just a, a custom thing and we could get used to doing something a different way. Um, so I have, I think that is, what I had to show you. Um, the other thing is um, for some of your products that we use a lot of paper and plastic, um, 
I used to use a nylon cuff instead of a washcloth. Washcloths are great, but I've started to go with loofah um, products now to exfoliate and to wash. And loofah, I didn't realize, was, is a plant. It's like kind of like a gourd that's dried out. We actually probably could grow our own loofah. Um, I always thought it was a sponge or something from the sea, but no, I was wrong. It's, um, it's a plant. And so it's definitely biodegradable where those nylon puff things are not. Um, okay, any question about, any other questions about bathroom? Okay. Okay, so now I wanted to talk about laundry, um, laundry products. Um, and I've spoken to many of you about, about uh, these things. Of course, you can, instead of buying liquid laundry detergent in big plastic tubs, um, I've started using these things. They're, they're from this sheets laundry club. And there are these little, very light, um, compacted detergent in these, they feel like foam, but they're not. They're detergent compacted in sheets. There are a bunch of brands. Uh, uh, this is Sheets Laundry Club. Linda, I think you use True Earth or Earth Breeze. Yeah. Uh, I use True Earth. They, I ordered Earth Breeze. Okay, so yes, there are different brands. Um, I've used this brand. Shell has tried a different one. Linda has tried a third. I've looked for these in stores. I found it in one store. It's found not this particular brand, but uh, another brand. Um, but most of most stores don't yet carry things like this. But they work great, um, especially if you have if you have to carry your detergent to uh, the washing machine, like my nephew who lives in a, a five floor walk up in Brooklyn. <laughs> Um, these are so much lighter. Um, and also they save on your carbon footprint um, in, in actually transporting to the store or to your home because they're so light. And they work great. You just tear them up, throw them in the wash front. I have a front loader, throw them in the front front door and they work, they work really well. Um, this has a linen scent. They all all the brands also carry unscented. Do they um, totally disintegrate in the wash? Yeah, they dissolve because they're just pressed detergent without the water. So they, yes, they dissolve. There's no plastic component. Um, they're made, everything is, um, they're made with coconut oil, alcohol, natural vegetable oil, coconut oil extract, deionized water and essential oil. So it's all biodegradable. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you is, uh, well, ET makes this stain stick. I'm sorry, I've used it a lot. I, and I gave the other one to my daughter, so you have to see my used one. Um, but it works great. You wet the stain, you rub this on, rub it in. And it just has a paper label. It's a stain stick. There's no plastic container around it, no spray bottle. So um, this, this works, this is one way that works really well. Um, and I actually found these uh, yesterday in a store and I'm gonna show you some pictures of that store later. Um, this is a wool dryer ball. Uh, comes in a really cute bag and I got this as one of my favorite gifts last year for my birthday. Um, they come in different cute characters like this panda. They have other, other little animal characters or different colors. But what these do is you throw it in your, in your dryer when you dry your clothes and it helps 
not only the lanolin and the wool will help soften your clothes, but it by, by bouncing around in there with the clothes, it separates them and helps them to dry faster. Now, who cares about the cute little animal face bouncing around in your dryer? That actually has a purpose. So if you want to scent, if you don't want to use a dryer sheet, which also doesn't decompose, um, but you want a scent, say you want a scent in your towels, um, you like that dryer sheet scent, um, then you, what you do with these is you take, this is a lavender essential oil, but any essential oil you like, and you drop just a few drops on one of the black parts, uh, maybe on the panda bear's ears, and you can actually uh, put the essential oils anywhere on the wall, but they often stain. So if you put it on the black part, you don't see you don't see the essential oils, and um, so that's why they have a little face on them, which is cute. Um, and they actually do. They actually do make your dry your clothes dry in the dryer faster. Of course, even better is to hang your clothes on the line. If you can do that, if you have the ability to do that, if the weather if the weather uh, cooperates with that, that is that that's even a better way to go. Um, and the last thing I wanted to show you <clears throat> uh, on laundry was this guppy friend bag, which uh, I'll show you what it looks like. It's, it's a bag that if, if you do have, if you do wear polyester clothes or fleece clothes, Linda tells me she's allergic to wool and, and doesn't want to give up her fleece, which um, generates a lot of microplastics and microfibers in the wash which gets rinsed out into the water table and eventually into our drinking water. Um, I think Michal mentioned the other day that uh, we, we uh, at the end of our life will have eaten about a credit card's worth of plastic. No, no, a week. A week, oh my gosh. Okay, a week a credit card's worth of plastic because the microfibers are, the microplastics are now in the air, in the water. So if you want to help prevent that, this guppy bag, you put your polyester clothing in here. It says on it, stop micro waste <laughs> um, when you wash it. And at the end of the wash, when you put your clothes, when you take your clothes out to dry them, you'll find a scoop of the microplastics and you throw it in the trash. Um, but it's better than having them drain into your water. Um, so, um, let me see. Any questions about, about laundry products? Gonna just share my screen again. Okay, so here we. I want. All right, the here these this picture here back to toilet paper. I took a picture uh, in Wild Roots yesterday. They do sell single paper wrapped uh, recycled paper, toilet paper and bamboo paper in my local wild roots, so you can buy one roll of paper or six, however you want. And um, I really, this is, uh, Procter & Gamble is still cutting down Canadian boreal forests to make toilet paper. It's ridiculous. Um, so I encourage everybody to look for toilet paper um, made at least from recycled paper or bamboo and not Charmin from that cu cutting down Canadian forests. Um, so that's why I took that picture. We talked about laundry. I, I wanted to show you this. I took this in a, the Santa Cruz Whole Foods because I was looking to see if they had any 
sustainable packaging at the Whole Foods and uh, in the laundry category. And I found this seventh generation is interesting. So the, the, the package is um, a, a high percentage paper. Of course, the um, cap is still plastic, but it's a lot better. Um, I think you must break off the cap and you can recycle that, that heavy paper container. I had never seen that. And then the other picture is a lot of these uh, products are coming in aluminum, aluminum containers now like this hand soap and that I found on the, on the uh, Whole Foods shelves. So I, di I did still find a lot of plastics. You can see the, the other uh, products kind of on the edges, but these were two things I found at Whole Foods that were pretty good, that, that were better than a big plastic jug. Okay. Everybody take a <laughs> deep breath. Now we're on to the kitchen. I'm gonna try to stop sharing again. Okay, kitchen. Kitchen is fun. Uh, where do I start on that? Um, maybe these are. This is a place that you've thought about, thought about before. Um, okay, let's just start with um, with trying to get rid of saran wrap. Um, Okay, so I've been using some things like these silicone lids to cover plates and bowls. Um, they're stretchy and let me see, I, sorry. Okay, they're, they're stretchy, they stretch over. You can, you can turn the bowl upside down and your things won't fall out. Um, they come in sets, so you can have different sizes, and hmm, you just stretch it over the bowl, and then pull on this tab, and you get a really tight seal. I think Linda has some silicone lids, and actually, I went through my cabinets, and um, I had found I had <laughs> had some. <laughs> I just. I for, my dad brought them and I forgot that he had, but I don't know how Linda's work, but these look, work pretty nicely. They, you put them down, you push on the center and they, they're pretty, they, they stay on. I don't think they seal as well as the other ones, but if you just want to cover something in your refrigerator, um, always in the past, I would use a, a plate. I just put a plate on top of my bowl, but um, but these work great too, or if you're outdoors and you want, you have a bowl of food and you want to just protect it, um, then you can take these silic silicone lids and oh, well, here's a white one. What we use those for is to replace um, covering things with saran wrap in the microwave. What was ah, the, there it you never know. even occurred to me you could use them to seal things in the refrigerator. Uh-huh. Um, you know, um, the first stretchy one, Alyssa, that you showed us. Oh, the stretchy ones. Those are silicone. Uh, they're just called silicone bowl lids, and I, I think we put a a link, but you can, you can get them in anywhere. There. Anywhere. There's so there's so on Amazon or online. There's so many vendors of these. Just, uh, just say silicone lids and silicone lids and they work great. And they usually come in, a, in different sets of sizes. Like so, and they're not expensive at all. Um, okay, I wanted to show you about, um, about dish soap too. So this, this is really interesting. The first thing, one of the first things I tried was this company, ET, and they're again, a Canadian company, and they sell the dish detergent in these wax pods. You cut off the end, you squeeze, off, squeeze out this concentrated detergent um, into 
anything, but I used a mason jar and you can buy a lid for the mason jar that's a pump lid. And then you fill the jar with hot water and mix it and let it sit for 20 minutes and you have detergent. Again, because you're shipping without the water, it's lighter. The, the wax pods they say is backyard compostable or you can use it, it's nice and soft. So you can use it to make the beak on your Thanksgiving turkey centerpiece or you know, use it, give your kids or grandchildren the wax to, to model with. It was, um, it, again, you can choose the scent, the scent. And they also have um, hand soap. Um, be, besides dishwashing detergent. So this I keep, this is what we use now by our sink. However, I saw they had something else, uh, the same company. And I, I just bought these and I tried them yesterday. This is um, bar soap for dishes. And I, I think a lot of these, a lot of these solutions are, kind of going back to what our grandmothers or their mothers used to do. Um, so these, this, this bar soap for dishes, um, you can take just a scrub brush or your, your normal sponges. Here's another alternative. Here's a loofah scrub sponge on one side with a cel cellulose backing um, to instead of a plastic scrubber you can also scrub with um, they have copper or metal scrubbers um, but anyway there, then there's also this brush now this brush is interesting that you can get one like this it sort of looks like shaving soap um, and then you, you scrub it and scrub your dishes with that. This brush I got um, yesterday, you buy the handle and then when the scrubbing, this is bamboo, when the scrubbing brush gets worn, uh, they sell just the brush part to replace. Um, so, you know, you can do this. And um, they, the, the, the dish soap comes wrapped in paper. So, you know, I can imagine that it used to be that people didn't use liquid soaps to, to use to, to wash their dishes with. They, they made soap, bar soap, and used that for a lot of things. Um, so a lot, of these, a lot of these products are going back to the old fashioned way of doing things. Like, I know my grandmother used tooth powder when she was a child to brush her teeth, not toothpaste. Another thing in the cleaning realm is um, glass, bo glass spray bottles. Of course, the sprayer is still plastic, but at least we not, we're not using as much um, of plastic. We're not increasing demand for plastic. These are sturdy. I haven't broken one yet. I get them in a three pack and um, for different things for cleaning around the house. You can use that. Um, I, when, when you go, okay. Um, I have so many things to show you. <laughs> um, wax paper bags, paper bags are all great to use. Remember wax paper? Um, also this beeswax wrap um, to wrap instead of plastic wrap. It's, when you buy it, I bought this in stores. Uh, Linda tried some that Trader Joe's was selling. It's a, that one doesn't work so well. It's a little too thick. I tried making some of my own. It wasn't really very hard. And I had some old, the, the best thing is if you have some muslin, some cotton fabric and you grate beeswax on and then you iron it in. And it does really well to wrap food and things like bread or cheese. 
Just a note with um, bees wrap is that it has to be warm in order to work. It's great for, you can fold it to like uh, pack sandwiches, but for it to stay closed, um, you need to warm it up with your hands first because otherwise it won't stick. Another cleaning product is the cellulose. Um, you, you can, I think they're often marketed as Swedish dish, dish cloths, but they're, they're kind of like a, a thin sponge. And a lot of times you'll see them now in stores and they have a really pretty design. I bought a pack of plain blue ones um, because the pretty design ones cost $8 per sheet. And I think this plain blue one was like 10 of them for $8. So, um, so I, I kind of, I, I thought it was worth it to forego the pretty design, although some of them are really cute. Um, but instead of plastic sponges, these Swedish dishcloths dish are really, really um, good. And they're made of cellulose only, so they're biodegradable. Um, I wanted to, to talk about when you go shopping. So when you go shopping, um, it's wonderful if you can buy in bulk or look for products where you can return the packaging. Like Strauss Dairy will take the milk bottles back and the, they come in glass, which is better for you because they don't leach uh, chemicals into your, into your food. But another thing, if you can buy in bulk, I have a set of all different sizes of these cotton muslin uh, bags that you bring with you to the store. And on them, I don't know if you can, can you see that? Can you see the label? Yes. It, it, each bag has what they call the tear weight. And the tear weight is the weight of the bag. So the bag already has the weight on it. You fill it with your, say you're getting rice in bulk. You go to your bulk store, you fill the bag with your rice, they weigh it. When you go to the cashier, they weigh it and then they subtract the tear weight. So you're only paying for your product. And these bags are so nice. They're soft cotton muslin. You can wash them um, and you can store your food in them too. So I have a whole, a whole array of these that I take with me to the store. I also have two, um, I have two mason jars that have the tear, tear weight written on them. I can't find them. So they must be in some cabinet with stuff in them, but I couldn't find them. But I, um, Bob showed me that he just, he went to our local um, wild root store and he brought, he needed um, rye flour for baking. And he said, oh, well, you know, I just took, I took the canister with me and I, I had them weigh it and they put on the top the tear weight and did the same thing. So you can bring, and then he said, I'm just leaving that sticker on because it has the tear weight. And when I go back and refill it, they don't have to weigh it again. They already, it's already on here. So um, you can bring any container Mason jars are great, um, and you have you you have you weigh have them weigh it first. And if it's a store that sells in bulk, bulk they're not going to think you're weird. That's what they do. Um, and then when you come up, you're only paying. I've done this for years and years with spices. Um, spices are so inexpensive if you don't pay for the jar. I just can't believe the difference in cost when you go buy spices and teas in bulk. Um, so I think, okay. Uh, and then I just want to remind you, um, bring your own water bottle. These water bottles are everywhere. 
there is no need for us to buy the billions and bill. I think it, in the United States, they say, they, we buy 1,500 water bottles a second, a second. 1,500 plastic water bottles a second. Um, if you are like in a school community and you don't, and you wanna provide water to people, buy a big jug and let people refill their water bottles. Kirby, the school that I've been associated with the, the first day of school they bought, they gave every kid as a gift, a refillable water bottle and said, bring it to school and it was an activity. They got to decorate their water bottles and then kind of encouraging the kids to refill their water bottles. Um, so um, and another thing in the kitchen, tea. Go back to your loose leaf tea. Um, <clears throat> The, the tea bags themselves, uh, you can compost the, uh, most of them. Some of those uh, fancy ones that come in the pyramid, the, the tea bags are actually polyester and generate microfibers. So when you use them, you're drinking plastic. Um, so again, and sorry, again, you know, go back to that old fashioned way of making bulk tea. Everybody must have some, some like tea balls still. Go back to just taking a loose tea and, and making a cup of tea that way. Um, I'm gonna share again and go through some of these slides to make sure I didn't forget. Okay. Um, these were some these were some water glass water bottles or water bottles that weren't plastic that I saw on the shelves. But yesterday I also went to Gales. Anybody's ever gone to Gales in Capitola? Okay, they now have a policy. They will not sell plastic water bottles. So they have I, I should have taken a picture there, but they have a lot of these cans of water that you can buy. Um, I thought I had a picture of that. Hmm. Let me see. Sorry. Oh yeah, I can't see it because your faces are over. The, this is a very strange one I saw. It says liquid death and it's water. I, I don't know why they would market it as, but, but Gail's had different cans of water. So they're really trying. Um, they're really trying to, to set a good example um, on the water bottle front. Uh, this is some. This is this local wild roots that I I I took some pictures. They didn't yell at me. Um, on the right, you'll see the spices, all the different spices and teas. And now they don't. They have um, small paper or wax paper bags to collect your spices in, and then I bring it home um, and pour it into my spice bottles. And I can not emphasize a much, enough how much less expensive it is. It's like less than, than half when you're buying spices in bulk versus buying them from McCormick in a plastic jar. Um, so this is just three miles down the street from me and they have so many things. And I wanted to show you this because I think it's awesome. They have honey, natural vanilla extract, balsamic vinegar, apple cider vinegar, maple syrup, agave, tamari, you know, all these things that you can just bring your own container and fill it up and then use it. And if you live by yourself, 
and you don't use a lot of this, you can just get the small amount, smallest amount that you need. You don't have to, buying in bulk in these cases doesn't mean buying a lot. So if you only use, um, say, tamari soy sauce every once in a while and you want to get two ounces, just get two ounces. So it's very, um, it, it helps also to um, reduce waste. Um, I want to show you another picture. So this is another place I went to yesterday. And it is called Ethos. Santa Cruz, although it's not in Santa Cruz, it's in Capitola Village. Um, and I was, I, I, a colleague of mine told me about it and I went there yesterday and they call themselves a refillery. Um, and you can see on the lower right and the upper left, those are, this is a, those are things you can, bring your own container or buy one of their beautiful containers and, um, and, and get your products refilled there. And on the upper left, that is mostly things like shampoo and body wash and uh, body lotion. Um, at, uh, let's see, at there, there's on the right of that photograph, there are some, um, laundry detergent powders. So um, there's all kinds of things there. On the lower right, those are different flavors of dish soap. And if you notice the little glass bottles sitting on each of the big canisters, that is um, the scent. So you can open up that little bottle and smell what it is. Um, one is something rosemary, leuke, eucalyptus, there's just di three different scents of dish detergent soap, and you can bring your own bottle and refill it, and then when it's empty, come back. Um, on the upper right, those are all different kinds of straws, stainless steel straws, glass straws, bamboo straws. Uh, I actually don't, you know, so if you do need a straw, and, and also different ways to clean the straws, they have all different kinds. Um, the woman there is holding up cosmetics. It's a very cool concept. Um, it's a box and the box has magnets on the bottom. And then you buy um, your cosmetic in, the, in this like little metal tin. So you can see she in the box she has, she has a um, like a rouge, that a, a general rouge or lip gloss, and then there's eyeshadow, and it just you take you buy the tin and it sticks to the box because of there it's magnetized, and then when you're finished um, with it, you you just buy a refill and it just kind of uh, clips back into the box. The lipstick there on the very lower right is in an aluminum tube with a bamboo case. When you're done with that lipstick, you crack open the case, recycle the bamboo in your green waste and the aluminum in your uh, blue barrel. And so this kind of, and here you see some other floss, floss in a stainless steel container, floss in a bamboo container, and you can uh, refill those containers. So there are things out there, you have to look for them. They're not mainstream yet. Um, this refillery is next to all the boutiques in uh, Santa um, Capitola Village. However, the prices were not unreasonable. So I was really surprised they, they were pretty reasonable. That, that's where I got, that's where I got this, um, this, bamboo dish brush and it costs ten dollars and I think the refill brushes are five so it's not crazy expensive um so let's see okay so is everybody still with me <laughs> there's a lot of stuff here okay am I am I Still sharing or not? Not. All right. 
Let me see if I can get back to Zoom. Okay. All right. Now, um, who spelled it? Well, Elise is collecting. I'll share one thing. Um, I went shopping at Target and found they have all kinds of recyclables um, and things that are in non-plastic packaging, especially for cleaning and also for um, party goods, for uh, pa paper plates, for um, cups and all the kinds of um, things you might use for a party. They also have a lot of different varieties of sandwich bags. Um, so both in paper, um, some wax bags, um, some different kinds of silicon bags. Um, and the silicon bags are great. We have one a stat, stasher, which I know they also carry at Whole Foods and many stores now. Um, we've had Parmesan cheese in one of those for months and it's still good. Um, the only thing to be careful with with the silicon bags is they tend to have wide seams, so they may not be as big inside as they look outside. So get one a little bigger than you think you need. Okay, great. All right, so I wanna show you um, some things, other things you can try. It's getting to be gift season. All that cellophane tape is plastic. They, you can get paper tape. Some of them are quite pretty. This one uh, has little flowers on them. Can you see that? Uh, this one has sea creatures. I know Linda and Mark and Matt, they have paper tape that has bees on it. Is that right? Or Yep. Um, so try for your packing tape um, to, to um, not use so much plastic tape. It worked, these work great. We'll go backwards to paper tape. Um, get creative with your gift wrapping. Um, I, I got this, I started using this software tool called Airtable. So they sent me this reusable bag and that's really colorful. You can, you know, wrap, wrap your gifts in these, your, the myriad of reusable bags that you may receive um, or, or be as creative as possible. Um, use cloth to wrap. Uh, there's this really beautiful Japanese Puro Shiko, Shiki method of wrapping gifts and I'm gonna show you I'm gonna do one for you really quickly so you can see how easy it is. And then of course, handmade gifts or, or experiences. We have to um, reduce our consumer, our consumerism, um, give to a preferred charity for a loved one instead of more, buying more stuff. But I wanted to show you this because it's so cool. Let's say, I wanted to uh, give somebody this box of paper tape. Oh, that's another thing. A store like the Refillery that I showed you the pictures of, they have great ideas for gifts and you can encourage other people, give them ideas of ways that they can reduce their plastic by a gift. A lot of these things my girls have given me as gifts and, they re and I really appreciate it. But I'm gonna show you. Uh, I ordered something on Etsy and the people sent them with this um, with this kind of uh, bandana and that I don't really have a use for, but I so I thought I'd show you how I could you could use that to to wrap a gift. So let's see if you can you see that? Can you see where the bandana is? Yes. Okay, so all you do, this is a very simple method, and I'm gonna show you. I I have uh, this vase here that that I just happen to have out in my dining room because I grow these poppies and then I painted them. Um, so I'm gonna use that. All you do is you take a square of fabric. It's nice if the pattern is on both sides. 
Um, so if you have extra fabric or a pillowcase you don't need, or you find a, you know, a napkin that's pretty in a, in a thrift shop and you just wrap like this and like this, and tuck the bottom in, take, take the edges on both sides, these what kind of long edges now, and make a knot. And I'm gonna make it fancy. I'm gonna take some of these uh, poppies that I just happen to have in a vase, but you can put anything in to make it decorative that you want. And done, a gift. <laughs> And no, no plastic or paper. So do we have time, time for a few questions? Sure. Um, anybody? Yes. That me? Uh, can I ask about the other the end of the spectrum from gifts to garbage? Um, I have a lot of medical stuff going on, so I have a lot of guilt loves stuff, uh, but the garbage bag conundrum, um, you know, what can we do to substitute, substitute for plastic garbage bags that will keep things sanitary, keep things from being rodent ridden? Uh, we have some problems in this area with that. We have uh, I just wondered if they've come up with any, I mean, we used to use paper bags when I was a kid with the wax paper, yeah, paper bags. Um, but, you know, that's wasteful now. What are, what are our solutions? Well, oh, one thing, paper. oh, I was going to say one oh. thing, the medical, the medical field is rife with waste. Um, and they realize that, that that's going to be, that's something that um, has to be dealt with. And there aren't great solutions. So what I want you to realize is plastic has insinuated itself so much into our culture and our society that it's hard to not use any. It's actually, it's impossible uh, right now. So what I try to do is reduce where I can, and I do not buy any plastic bags. Instead, what I do is I reuse things. So if I got, get a, something in a plastic bag, which I do, and I will because I can't avoid it, I save that plastic bag and then I use that for my garbage bag. Um, when I have a situation like you have, Carol, where you really need to contain it. Um, so that's one option is to just reuse things that co already come in plastic bags. For instance, um, I, I have a cat and the cat has a litter box. Um, I do not buy any plastic bags to clean the litter from the litter box. I, I take um, bags that I may get from my groceries, say, say um, a pasta, ba a bag that pasta came in, or a bag that some other, like that some other product came in, and I, I keep those and I use those. So, um, so it's not. I'm still using the plastic but at least that plastic gets used once, I mean, more than once, instead of most plastic bags are used for 11 seconds and thrown away, then thrown away. So, and then they end up in the landfill. And even, I don't even buy compost, there are compostable plastic bags and they are compostable, but they don't compost unless you put them in a compost and then they're, they don't compost for three to five years, even in the ocean. The compostable bags don't decompose for three to five years. In the meantime, they're still leaching chemicals. They're still, they still can be caught around a sea creature. So I think just try to do your best. Um, 
I think Linda had something to say. Um, yeah, well, I was going to mention that there are some of those compostable bags, and some of them will compost in your compost, you know, like urban compostable facilities. Um, they break down the, the heat, but I think there are some that will break down in your backyard compost. Um, but the other thing is, I know that when I was looking at how to get rid of different kinds of things, at least for some kinds of medical supplies like gloves and masks and things, that there are place there was some place that you could send them to. Um, I don't think uh, I think it may have been one of the brigades for um, TerraCycle, but I will look and see what I can find. But uh, you know, I think we all there are things that. Um, we have to deal with that are not um, recyclable or not compostable that we still need for one reason or another. Um, so to do the best we can and also to um, be in touch with our vendors to remind them that, you know, it would be great if they could find a way to deal with this. Um, um. So uh, I wanted to just, if any of you have ideas of things, um, Mira mentioned the bags that your newspapers come in to reuse those and those are perfect for litter, but also it used to be people picked up their dog litter with newspapers. So you can still do that, pick it up with the newspaper, wrap it well and put it in your trash. Um, we use um, we we often shop at Whole Foods specifically because we get our our groceries in, double bagged in those brown paper bags. <laughs> so we're paying whole whole paycheck for doubled paper bags that will disintegrate pretty quickly. Yeah. Okay. But it's hard to find something for you know, like a big, tall kitchen bag. Not, no good choices, really. Right. It, you're right. And so, like I said, don't beat yourself up about it. Do, do something else. Um, okay, so I wanted to just finish up here and... Uh, bummer. I had this nice animation for you guys, <laughs> but it's not working. Um, so we wanted to we wanted to um, say you know about the three R's: re reduce, reuse, recycle. But we wanted you to think about things uh, these days to add a few R's: refuse. Um, Refuse that plastic straw. Refuse that clamshell container at the restaurant. Refuse those cucumbers wrapped in plastic when they could, they have their own casing. Um, and refuse the propaganda that tells you to buy more, buy, buy, buy more stuff. Um, reuse also means refill. We talked a lot about bulk and refillable containers. Um, the fourth thing is repair. We didn't talk too much there are, about that. There are new laws coming out, giving people the right to repair, the right to repair your computer, your iPhone, your printer, your cars. Um, it used to be that you could just replace a light bulb in your car. Now you have to play, replace an entire $300 assembly. Um, so we have to fight that. Recycling is good if you can be sure the item actually is recycled and not actually ending up burned to release more greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. But the first, the first things, refuse, reduce, reuse, repair, they're so much better. Don't generate the waste in the first place. Um, and then this, I wanted, to, I wanted you to, mm -hmm. let's see if it'll, oh, I want, I want you to know, um, forget about the guilt. Don't be guilty about your plastic use. Like I said uh, to Carol, um, 
it's impossible not to use pla any plastic. It's impossible. So just don't be guilty about it. The corporations want you, want you to blame yourself and not them. And in fact, um, what we need to demand from companies is what they call a circular design, where you'll hear the word circular economy, which means the product has to be designed to, um, to address the, the whole life cycle, what's gonna happen to it at the end of its life. And that the manufacturers that design and produce these products need to be held to account for those things. And so that's the political aspect and also, but we can do that by telling companies when we're not happy with their products because of these issues. So um, we telling companies that we want them to select materials that can be recycled, that can be reused, that can be returned to them. Um, so, um, what I, what I want to leave you with is pick one item to replace with a plastic-free alternative. Just pick one and then find, find one that you like. And once you do that, build on your success and try another. And when you have that, tell, your, tell the people you buy from to, to stock those things. Um, tell Costco to bring back recycled paper, made toilet paper. You know, tell tell your grocer that you want these sheets, kind of laundry detergent, or whatever it is, um, because in the end, um, they want to sell products to you, and they want their customers to be happy. So this little guy on the picture, his name is Cody. He's a He's the photographer's nephew, and um, Cody and all the children um, deserve to grow up in a world not poisoned. Um, I want to leave you with the idea that recycling, again, will not solve this endless stream of plastic waste. Recycling is an aspect, but that's not the solutions. The, the manufacturers want you to believe that it is, but there it isn't. What we have to do is stop using so much. So I hope you'll try. Thank you, Elisa. Thank you all for being with us today. Um, if you have ideas for future programs, let us know. Um, we are thinking, one that we've been thinking about is doing a program on clothes repair. Um, and if this is something you feel passionate about, please um, consider joining the Sustainability Committee. We would love to have you. Um, just to add on to what Elisa said, one of the things we forget about that is that plastics are a product of the fossil fuel industry. And as they see the need for fossil fuels going down, they're doing everything they can to increase our needs for plastic. Um, so it's a battle that we need to be prepared to face um, to, for the world for our kids' future. Again, thanks for being with us today and um, look forward to seeing you again. Hey, Linda, when do you think you'll be able to send out the resource list in this presentation so we can start buying stuff? <laughs> um, probably Monday. One of the things I have to figure out is um, Elisa and I used a different um, software for our slides. Um, Sending out mine is easy. Um, turning hers into a PowerPoint to, to send out with them also is a little more complicated. And what I discovered is key point is um, I couldn't open. I, I had to have Mark do stuff to open it. So what we may end up doing is putting those slides. Um, OK, we'll put them all in a PDF to send out. I was bit. just going to say that. Yeah. That's great. Sounds good. Thank you so much. All right. Great program. All right. Thanks. Thanks, everybody, for listening. <laughs> Thank you. Hope you got some fun ideas. Yep.
Thank you very much. It's just been excellent.